fans, wrestling fans, or should I say TNA maniacs out there, welcome to the TNA recipe. It's your boy, Big Red, along with my co-host, JR. Where you at? What up, what up? Tonight, we're going to start off the show by paying respects to one of the greatest, um, man, just one of the greatest, WWE, and also he worked in TNA as a manager, Mr. William Moody, better known as Paul Bearer. <laughs> really Birthday single the third. You know, we lost him earlier this week. You know, saying condolences to his family. And, you know, he will be missing. Very love. Much love. Much love, man. I mean, at looking at him at 58, that just tells you, love your, love your loved ones every day. Right. Every day. All right, all right. Let's jump into the the TNA, you know, the 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 go home show before the big pay per view lockdown on Sunday. Um, we start off with you know the usual video package of you know past you know shows what happened, Aces and Aces and blah blah blah, all this stuff. So we start off the show with no other than the greatest man that ever lived, self proclaimed Austin Aries. You know, he comes down, gets in the ring, spats his bullshit about, you know, how he's the greatest, you know, the greatest superstar to ever, you know, grace of TNA and blah, blah, blah. Um, then he gets into the bullshit that he tells Bully Ray um, and Hardy that he gave them words of encouragement and all this. And, you know, not just yet. the usual soft Mary. What you think about that, JR? Well, happy, dude. I like the fact that Austin Aries is a cocky son of a bitch, to be honest with you. Uh, his character in TNA uh, is spot on, like, perfect to be a heel. And his last name in real life is actually Healy. So I think it's, or it might be his middle name, but I, I think it. Jeff, uh, him feuding with whoever is going to be awesome. Because the man has the mic skills, the man has the ring skills. He might not be the biggest man in the business, but he's got the biggest attitude. Yeah, and, the big, I, and I think he has a big heart, and he, he loves his business. Yeah. And if, if he will do anything within his power to, to get back on top. You know, the, 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 it, it fits him well. I mean... His gimmick fits his look. He look. You look like if you met him, he would be an asshole just like that. Yeah, if you – there was a – when he was in Ring of Honor, uh, I think it was something on True TV that showed fans that got too involved and too caught up in the in the match that he was in. They waited for him outside. And – Challenged him, and he popped dude in the mouth, and the dude was like, "Oh my God, that hurts! That hurts! It hurts my mouth! It hurts!" Because he popped him. This dude got in his face, and and dude was like, I don't know, six three, two hundred and seventy five pounds, fat fucking guy. But Austin Aries, five foot whatever, popped him in the mouth, and he was like, "It hurts!" Like this dude's a bad man. I mean. And he's a great talent. Hands down, man. The man knows what he's doing in his business, yeah, and I'm and I'm very happy that he landed in TNA versus the company up north. Right, because they 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 yeah. this is one of the guys that they're actually utilizing right. I mean, they're putting him in the right fuse and everything. So. Right, and then I, I'm just a little bit concerned about the absence of Bobby Roode with him saying he hasn't been able to hold him on. Like, where, what's Bobby Roode? Is Bobby Roode on vacation? I mean, they're the tag team champions, so uh, what, what, what's going on with that? You know, I, I, just, I, I don't get that. Um, they won it when they were in the U.K., taking it from... Uh, Hernandez and Chavo. You know, you don't have both of them on TV. You just have Aries. 
Yeah. And Bobby Root, for the longest time, to me, was one of the best heels in the business, right. along with Bully. Um, so, and it, it, it kind of, to me right now, it's like, okay, well, where's your partner? Yeah. So, Anthony, what's your thoughts on uh, Austin Aries? Uh, Austin Aries, I think that Austin Aries is excellent. I have nothing to say about him. Great ring skills, great firm, mm-hmm. ass, natural heel. It's excellent. There's nothing, and also what I also, what I also, what he does with his promos, especially what he did tonight, is he makes it so that you know that he's still running to, for the world title. You know, like he's like he's basically saying, "Hey, I might not have the title right now, but don't forget me." I like that about him. Definitely, definitely like that. Uh, I I think, that, and I hope what they do with him and Rude is give them all the gold, just like. When Angle, a few years back, held every belt in the company. He had the top of the belt. Remember that. That was, I mean, I was like, what? That, I mean, that, that was sick. You, you're, you're a single person, and you have every piece of equipment, as far as the gold goes, around your waist, your arms, your head, your whatever, whatever part of your body you can fit a belt on, you had it. And it was very deserving for Kurt Angle, you know. But I would like to see that again, having Rude and him, and then have them feud possibly over the big one. You know, have them feud over the World Heavyweight Championship once they have every piece of equipment that there is. Right. Rude not being there this week might be the beginning of them splitting up. You never know. This might be them just sitting. That might be the reason why he wasn't there. Think about Nikki eventually. Right. That that is, that's yeah, probably sure. very true. I mean, he, but he could be, there's a possibility, I don't know, he, he might be injured. He might just be on vacation. Right, right. You don't might, know. He could either be vacation, but, this possible, but it could also be for storyline purposes. Like, Maybe he maybe next week they'll say that he missed his flight. You know what I mean? Quote unquote. Okay. So right. Dude, what's your what's your thoughts on uh, Mr. Austin Aries? A double. Um you ask me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do I think about him? Well gimmick I mean I mean, what, I mean, where do I mean everything that you guys have already said? Where do we start? I mean, the man, the longest reigning exhibition champion, beat the longest reigning world champion in TNA, and, and he really, even before he started doing all this, think think about where he's been. And I'm gonna do strictly TNA because Jr. or because Jr. kind of specified ROH, so I'm gonna specify his pre greatest man that ever lived, TNA days. When he, when he first came to TNA, one of his first matches was in a match with none other than Christopher Daniels. Great match, amazing match. Dude had a lot of potential. Comes to TNA in, a, like, in like 2005, 2006 or so. I mean, it, 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 was, it was sort of a beginning for him. Sorry. It was a sort of a beginning for him, but Back when he was Austin Star, right? Okay. <laughs> yep, when he, when he eventually became Austin Star. He leaves afterwards, comes back, wins his, con- wins his TNA contract at Destination X 2011, then proceeds to, a few months down the road, proceeds to become the longest reigning x Vision champion in TNA history. Then at the very same pay-per-view that he got his contract in 2011, he becomes world champion in 2012. Fast forward to his, his great matches against Jeff Hardy. He may not have the title, but then he and Rude become tag team champions. And you want to talk about two great heels? One of the best heel tag teams to me potentially can be Rude and Aries. They may not have been together that long, but both of them are great mic skills. Both of them can go in the ring. And both of them are just absolutely brilliant heels. Brilliant. It's, and you know what? And you know what, it's not about the, and you know what, as far as Aries being one of the best, he may not be one of the biggest, but he's one of the best. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. Well put, well put. So that's, so as far as I'm concerned, he, and to me, who should have been superstar, who should have been TNA Wrestler of the Year, 
with all due respect to Jeff Hardy, the man who should have had it is Aries. And I have to say, when it comes to the greatest man that ever lived, he doesn't, I mean, you can't call it, it's not being the greatest, it's not being, or better yet, I'm going to take a page from Dolph Ziggler. It's not showing off if you can back it up. This dude is probably a bigger show off than Dolph Ziggler and a bigger a-hole than Mr. Anderson all rolled into one. He is a kind of son of a bitch. I give him that, and very deservedly, deservedly so. The man can back deservedly it up. Deservedly so, yes. Right. He truly, to me, he truly, he truly proves that he is the greatest man that ever lived. Every time you see him in the ring, because he's he's he, he, he's just that damn good. With all due respect to Triple H, Aries is the living testament to that. All right, Brad, keep going. Let's go. Next one. All right. Next up, we got Jeff Hardy comes out versus Austin Aries. Which Brady just said he he has great matches with Hardy. I mean, you know, Hardy to keep up, you know. He puts Hardy at his at his A game. I'm gonna say that. And this this was a good match, you know, until Matt Morgan got involved. And that was a huge carbon footprint. That thing was nasty. You really took it off. His, his, I mean, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about the beard. F, F goat face. This Wait, is he beard. trying to talk to Andrew Bryan as far as being goat face? As, as far as, dude, this, this, this beard is way better. Um, but the, the heart, the huge carbon footprint, and then he sets him up for the carbon footprint on the post, and Bully comes out. To play the nice guy, nice guy main event for lockdown, which I think there's going to be some weird turn that might happen. But I would, I really would like to see Bully Ray have the belt. But I would have more liked it as a heel and not a face. Right. 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 Bully Ray has potential to be one of the top heels in the business. Yeah. Just like before when he was a heel. He showed beneath by himself that he could be a top right. bad guy. And I think that's the route that they're going to go, but I'm wondering if eventually if they're going to actually have him be revealed as an ace as an ace leader, along with winning the title. Well, and that... Er, go ahead. And that is what could... And that exactly is what lead, could lead to him becoming a heel champion like many of us would like is for them to pull a swerve, potentially with him and Brooke, to make TNA's version of the McMahon-Helmsy regime. I would like that. I, I totally think that, that that would be a good swerve on fans. It would be a good... Turn I, turn on, is is Lagana going to write it that way? We don't know. Um, I will tell you that I have enjoyed... TNA a lot more uh, without Russo, even, even though they had to pick up the, the slack for him, and they they did have the the Claire Lynch bullshit with uh, with AJ that <laughs> Russo started, but I think that Lagana ended properly, and and we're moving on, and now we have different storylines. I'm not really so. They do the aces and aces kind of been drawn out a little effed up, but some of the new things that they're introducing into it is pretty cool. Uh, But, you know, Matt Morgan, going back to Matt Morgan, I I, I think that his his thing against Hogan, and I'm wondering where that cape went, to be honest with you. Uh, but I think Matt Morgan can be a big badass in this business and not given the stuttering bullshit that he was given in the other company. And he is a great athlete, you know. And I want to see that go go forward. But then after, after you had the, the Morgan thing, you know, you got uh, Morgan backstage saying he's going to gut the roster to get what he wants. 
right. And what he wants is the title. Yeah, he, and he, damn he, right, I I think he should be in in that mix. He's been there long enough. Right. Versus versus giving you know, even though I just said I would like to see Bully have it as a heel, but right. maybe Morgan as a heel having the belt. It's a man's a beast. I I love Matt Morgan as a heel. I think we got a, a new caller on our E Dog. What's up? Yeah, what, what what's your thoughts on Matt Morgan? Um, I like him. I mean, big agile dude. Uh, he never really got his just due like he should have. I think he could be. He could be a big star. Right, right. Yeah, I I love the fact that when he's uh in the promos with a uh, Hulk Hogan, I love the fact he calls him by his first name Terry. <laughs> yeah, that's just true. Heel. That's just true heel status. Hey, you gotta you gotta realize he's pulling that from the main guy in uh, the other organization, Mister Mister Brooks. What I thought, um, but I I like the outside interference from the fan. Yeah. Pre-show, I was talking to Ultra Golden Chris, Mr. Cox. Uh, I've seen that guy. I, and I don't know that I've seen him as a fan before, but I've seen him before on Impact Television. I don't know if it was as a uh, security guard or something, but the, the man's face looked familiar. So that that was totally staged. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taz being like... He just spilled a, a beer or a, an adult beverage on his face. It, it was—he didn't throw it at him. He just spilled it. Yeah, I was like, "What?" Right? I mean, come on, they're not gonna yeah. let no they're not gonna let no random fans just throw something in Steve's face. No, where's security? They came out and grabbed him, but it, it wasn't the same as grabbing him. What security would normally do if it wasn't a plant? Like, motherfucker, get your ass over here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they're just yeah. trying to build build stuff up for lockdown, and I get it, you know. Right. I, I, but the, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a wrestling match. It was more of a fight, and right. I, I appreciate it. But at the same time, it was, it was short, the interference, and it's like, eh, not... Not what I would have wanted to see. What I want to know is how many times are they going to have Sting go up against Aces and Eights? I mean, it's it's starting to get a little repetitive now. I yep. I I preferred his backstage segments tonight, which I'm sure you might get to, but yeah, like the fact that he was bloody as hell. Oh, no, I have You know, so, uh, and he was he was crazy backstage, right. and I. I don't like seeing it, but the man's fifty plus years old. Yeah, he's he's one of the, but he's one of the best in shape fifty plusers that's still in the business because he hasn't put himself through three hundred days a week all the time, whatever, you know. And being in TNA, you don't have to do that. Well, now you might. Who knows what's going to go with going forward with them going live. Coming to Chicago, coming to wherever the hell they're going to go after that. But in, in, same, same to me. Same to me isn't isn't the best wrestler that's out there, but he is one of the best characters, right. and deservedly so should be a Hall of Famer in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is in New York. Right, right. He should be. Like Sting's one of that's one of the most popular, long-running characters out there. And he gets props for making a dig without having to go out and work to do it. Right. Indeed so. Er, did, 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 am I the only one that originally thought it was Mr. Anderson that hit Sting with the beer bottle at first? I'm like, what the, is that Mr. Anderson? At first I thought it was him, but I guess not. Uh, When? No, when Sting, during Sting's match with Devon, originally I thought it's like, wait a minute, is that Mr. Anderson? 
Oh, who hits Tiger? Uh, oh, yeah, no. Oh, with the beer? Okay. <laughs> They got, yeah, uh, I, 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 at first I thought it was him because I thought he was wearing the Aces Nates hat like the others usually do. So I thought it was him at first. It, it was wearing the Aces Nates gear, minus the vest. But uh, I see, like I said, I've seen that guy before. I knew it wasn't Anderson, but hey, he does he does have a resemblance to him. You are correct. All right, well, all right. All right. Well, it looks like Well, when when it, like you said, when are this match ended up being Devon due due to outside interference. All right, all right. Next, next we're gonna move on. Um, next we got with Russ Briscoe. I I don't even want to talk about that. Jim, no, was it, it be, wait, wait, because you because you love how good he is on the mic. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say, dude. I was about to say, dude. God, God, please. I mean, that, that segment, like him, him in the ring. I was like, okay, let me listen. And then, like five seconds in, I'm like, shut up. Like, and then Angle, Angle comes down to save the segment. Oh, in all honesty, he did man. save the segment. Well, wait a minute. And then, what, what what get me uh, about what Rick Briscoe said is that they go metal that that fake gold metal around his neck or whatever, and the dance, for, the, for, the, the, for a sport they kicked out of the Olympics. I'm like, wait a minute, ain't you in the same sport, you idiot? What the uh, in, in in technically no, because it's sports entertainment. But yeah. <laughs> Hey, what, 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 he, like called like a, a, he called it like a tin, a tin ornament or some shit right. around right. his neck. Yeah, but like you said, the man got like, a goddamn gold medal in the Olympics. That's fucking awesome. Right? <laughs> With a broken neck. If what Chris was any good, he'd still be at the other place where his dad's one of the higher-ups. Something's going on there. Right. Right, you know, right. You know, you know, I don't know. I I don't know if West Frisco is even any good. I did enjoy the match for his gut check versus uh, Bischoff, but was it just that match, or can the guy actually wrestle? I mean, his obviously his dad could. Frisco and Patterson obviously were but, but, awesome. But, but the shoes of your father are usually usually the shoes aren't that, aren't big enough you can fill them, or you know you, the shoes are just too big to fill. In a lot of cases, we've seen it when a lot of different legacies out there. They just can't fill their dad. Yeah, and you got them, a lot of them in the E. You know, there's a there's a couple, and we won't, we'll talk about them in the after show. But yeah, there's there's a couple that are good. There's a lot that are bad. <laughs> right. You know. All right. Red. Next yeah. one. Let's go. All right. All right. Basically, basically, you, you got it right. Kurt comes out to save the save the segment. You know, tells him basically he's gonna kick his ass at lockdown because it's just gonna be them two locked in the cage. Right. So, you know, he said he wasn't gonna wait though. He's gonna kick his ass now. So in the midst of him kicking Wes's ass. You get the guys from the back to come out there, one of which being D'Lo Brown, and they separate them. They finally separate them, and Kurt Angle's like trying to tell the tell the other ones, it's him, it's him, as he come out there to you know reveal the VP. So for Angle finally breaks loose and runs up and gets a low blow from D'Lo, revealing himself as the VP of Aces mm-hmm. and Eights. Congratulations, Rad. And I called this from the beginning because I I, I know D'Lo, D'Lo Brown was one of my favorite wrestlers. I know this guy's walk. I know his, I know what the fuck he looks like. And dude, his his neck I don't think has any bones in it. Right. So the way he the that, way he what, rotates his shit. That's the, the way he, that's the the way he thing. his neck. It's like what the Man, hell. That's the way. <laughs> I swear to you, when I first saw him do that, I used to imitate him all the time doing that shit. And I guarantee you couldn't do it right. Yeah, no, no, nobody can't do it like D-Lo. See, he ain't got no, 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 nothing in that neck. It's, it's all just like, 
I got a couple ligaments here, but no bones. Right, I'm gonna swing my head around, and you can't, and you can't do it. You know, it's like, yeah. Right. So, 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 what are y'all thoughts about him turning out to be the VP? I think I majority. I didn't expect him to be the VP. I'll be honest. I didn't expect it, but because of our conversation last week and you pointing it out. I expected it, you know. Um, but it's it's kind of it's kind of effed up. Like that they got him doing it, Taz doing it. The next thing you gotta find out is like Hogan is is behind it, and, and that will completely ruin it for me. Yeah, um, yeah, if yeah. It, it, they should they should never turn that hot that guy heel ever again. He's just no. If it's this young enough, it's going to be I'll Bischoff. Be right if it's Bischoff, Bischoff is believable because he's just a natural fucking heel. Right. Well, when, when, they, when they had that segment, when they had that segment a few months ago where the president was there talking, even though it was done with the auto-tune or whatever the hell voice, well, voice talking over us. shit, the way the guy was talking, how he paused and the things he said and paused after things he said. It had to be Bischoff. Everybody has said it. But yeah. Yeah. I, you know, some so people expect it to be Jerry, but I'm like, Jim Jerry is still in Mexico right now. It's, Jeff, I, and I, and Jeff Jarrett, I think to me, is, is if you want to go to that Jeff Jarrett, down that Jeff Jarrett pass, very underrated guy. Yeah. I think he, he was never given the right push, but he made something of it. Um, back to Aces and Ace, though, I really think that it is Eric, just because of how that segment went down months ago, the way he was talking, it has to be him. When, when they had... When they had Joseph Park locked up and Sting and Hogan went there to confront them in the clubhouse and the way the guy was talking, it's it's fish off. It, it is. Mm. It yeah, but, he loves motorcycles. He loves motorcycles. I, it, exactly. I don't, I don't know how they can make it any different and um, put mean, somebody else in that chair. Right. I mean, because he, he was, I'm like, he he fits the the biker persona. I mean, gimmick just perfectly. I mean, Jeff Jarrett don't really fit that because he's more like a country guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean like country country, but just like country like. Right. You know. Oh, well, you, know, you yeah. want him? You, you want him and Kurt Hennig back together to do rap as crap? Right. Rap as crap. The West Texas uh, Rednecks. You know there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Make, make, it, make it Jeff Jerry the leader of, of, of Aces and Aces like making James Storm a member. Yeah. But like you said, Jeff Jarrett would make sense because he has a legit gripe. He would have a legit gripe with the company that he's the founder, but he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. Right. That's, that's no, always, he would have you a know, gripe. You know, yeah, exactly. Both Jeff Jerry and Eric Bischoff both got, you know, gripes because, you know, how the way they ran off Eric Bischoff. But the only reason I'm saying Eric Bischoff because you know, whatever, uh, uh, you know, baby, baby Bischoff ain't too far behind from what he does. Right. Look, Eric Bischoff once set up a flipping pay per view for a wrestling company just so that he can go to the motorcycle rally every year. He started. Yeah, yeah, what he did for a while. There was no money made off of that show for the Loud Gate. It was just a bunch of drunk motorcycle dudes hanging out. So he knew it. He said what I mean. He, he once did that. So I could see him wanting to fulfill his fantasy as being the leader of some motorcycle game. And this is his chance. Right, right. Anybody else got any thoughts on the d segment? All right, all right. Well, basically, d was saying, was telling, uh, you know, Sting, like, you know, I trust who I'm with, but can you trust 
the guys that you're going to be locked in your cell mm-hmm. with that's supposed to have your back. You know, planting that seed in their head. Of who's going to be the next attorney. Right. So next we see Steam backstage with Team TNA bleeding and shit is basically telling them, hey, we need to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? We need that one man advantage because they, you know, so far they've been having the advantage over us, so we need to get the advantage over them. So, let's see, next matchup was uh, Samoa Joe and uh, Magnus. Joe and Magnus, former tag team champions, by the way. Right. I was, I was going to bring that up. That those two were tag team champions, and the backstage static that they had I think was going back to when they had the titles together. I don't remember how that broke down, but you know, I I, I know I remember it broke down. I just don't remember exactly how it went went that way. But uh, having them back in the ring and then winning the match and high five and at the end of it, which actually kind of looked awkward. Um, but it happened then, guys. It, I love Magnus. I love Joe. Is the reason I started watching TNA. Me Joe when was on his undefeated streak back in the day. Is the reason I actually started watching TNA every freaking week. And right. to me, seeing a guy his size, six foot, two hundred and seventy-five pounds ish, whatever he is, and Flying all over the goddamn place. So man, uh, he's, he's he's a great wrestler to me. Right, right. And of course they went against uh, old baby Bischoff and Doc, and they. Won Although I'm a bit surprised they put Garrett with him instead of Mike Knox. I would have thought they would have put the two big men together. Well, why not you put two big men in there? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they did that because Mike Knox. If you uh, look at the Delo promo, the the second the second. Uh, thing when they came back from commercial, right. when he was promoting uh, Devon, yeah. Mike Knox put up nine instead of eight. <laughs> I was like, "You <laughs> fuck out, motherfucker!" <laughs> he put up four fingers on one hand and a full hand on the other hand. I was like, <laughs> "I was like, are you serious?" Did that really happen? And I rewinded it. I rewound it on my DVR to make sure that I saw it correctly. And I was like, oh, fail, you idiot. Wait, so is that why they didn't put him with Doc? I did. They kind of like them. That's my my opinion. (laughs) It's probably nowhere near true. But I'm talking about this match, but you realize that we actually skipped the match. Huh? We skipped the match before it. Oh, yeah, Hernandez and... uh. Hernandez, Chavo, and Velvet versus Gail Kim and Bad Influence. Yeah. Oh, and, and the way I wrote it down was the Mexicans with Velvet and the Bad Influence with Gail. <laughs> really? Wow, you really? call them the Mexicans? Really? Really? <laughs> really they are. Really. They don't have a... I don't have a tag team name yet. Could you? I mean, dang, you could have at least called them Project Texas since they're both from Texas, but dang. Yeah, the American people already had a Mexican American. All I got to say, dude, is seeing Supermax fly to me is fucking awesome. Right. Seeing a dude his size to do what he can do in the ring, man, when he went, when he left, and wasn't on, on Impact for a while, was on Triple A helping them out. He came back like 30 pounds lighter and cut. I was like, oh, God, he really looks like a badass now. Like, holy shit. This guy's for real. He went down, he, he went down did, his, did his duty, and came back and just looked like a fucking insane monster. Right. I hope he gets double. I, 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 I want to see him see with fucking with fucking Morgan again. 
Right. But what the fuck is up with them tights? Really, no, Superman? Some tights are bad. There's black, red, and blue to those. Dude, you, you, you're one of the guys that should not wear short trunks. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, bro. But his trunks go from like his red, white, and green speedo. The only fun to his knees. He's not wearing like uh, uh, the the little guys, although he shouldn't be wearing what he's wearing. Yeah, but anyways, um, it was a good match, you know. As we know, Chavo, you know, Chavo. We know who Chavo Guerrero is. He got the skills, you know. what I'm Saying every time he, and he works well, well with um with those two guys with a uh, bad influence, Daniels and Cass. Well, that Chavo is always a good hand to have. Yes. I mean, he's very, he, you know, we on one of our shows a few few weeks back, he's one of the minorities that has always been underrated. Exactly. I mean, because he's, he's basically, he's always in his uncle's shadow. I mean, it's like sometimes they, you know, it's like, Okay, Chavo is his own. He got skills, you know what I'm saying? But he always lives in Eddie's shadow. With all due respect. He's never going to be Eddie. He's never going to be no. Eddie. But he, like, he keeps trying to be. He's trying to be. Yeah, I know. He is a damn good wrestler, though. And I'll give him respect to the day I die. Actually, on a side note, you know something a little interesting? I talked, I said this about the uh, four-way knockouts title match, how it was between the last four champions. Kind of the same thing for their, uh, for the triple threat tag team title match between the last, yes, between the last three tag team champions, because Daniel, because Daniels and Kazarian were the champions, then, um, they were the world tag team champions of the world. And then Chavo and Hernandez got them, and now Aries and Rude have them. So that's a little bit of a little bit of an interesting uh, side note there. Very good. We saw what Gail Kim got to pin on Velvet Sky, you know, which is a direct role reversal. If you got direct role reversal of last year's knockout title match at Lockdown, where Velvet was the challenger, Gail was the champion. So now it's a bit of a role reversal. Yep. Here we go. Right. Reversals this time. Mm-hmm. And Gail was Gail was the first ever knockout champion. First ever, yeah. that's right. Let's just be honest. Any match where you get to see Terrence Royal referee is always good. <laughs> I dude, I saw I actually saw a uh, an OVW match that Terrence fucking wrestles and she can go. Yeah, she actually can go. Good. Uh, okay. Why the hell are they just having her be rough then? That's the case. Uh, she can rough all she wants in that outfit. I want you can. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, Gail Kim ends up picking up the win over Velvet, and a clean win at that. Yes. Right. Now. And let's also not forget this. She hit the heat to Or, so th- there's a lot of history going back between uh, Gail and Velvet, especially considering right before she took the belt from Velvet in the first place, gave her a concussion. So there's a, there's a lot of history back then. That was basically how Gail Kim came back to TNA at Velvet Sky's expense. Right, right. Man. Well, Gail, Gail came back to TNA because... The E did not use her correctly, and she fucking right. walked out of a Divas Battle Royal, basically eliminated herself to go back to TNA, and I love it. I, you know what? You're pissed off at your fucking employer? Fuck you. I'm eliminating myself from this match. You didn't script it this way. Screw you. I'm going in and doing my own thing. Well, I will... I, 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 I respect I respect Gail for for doing that. Right. To be honest, I, I'm not really surprised that they traded her like that because the fact that she made history in TNA and you know how egotistical Vince McMahon is. So yeah, I'm not surprised they treated her like crap. We, we know what happened there. He basically signed her so that TNA couldn't use her. That's all that was. Right. Exactly. 
No, no. Uh, now, this next segment was my favorite segment of the night because my boy EY is back. I love EY. I love EY. And, 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 and Sting had to choose between Eric Young or James Storm to go up against Ken Anderson. Now, EY, EY, gave, EY has gave one of the best promos that he given since he started his comical routine. Good that I will tell you right now, Red, that EY's promo in that little segment had me goosebumps. I'm I right. was like, there is no way things not gonna pick him. Right. right. I was so pumped. I was like, EY is pissed? EY right. is he, he, this is the first time that anybody had ever seen Eric Young be serious. This is the first time since World Elite that he'd ever been this serious. Right. right. Think about how. Think about that. He had been so com- even even after he left World Elite, he wasn't this. Com- I don't even think he was this serious in World Elite. No. He wasn't. I mean, because it was like he said it was so much past, and he was like. I know I'm the funny guy, ha, 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 but look in my eyes. He's like, yo, they tried to take what I do for a living, what I love to do from me. He's like, yo, I got, you better say, I got to get you, if, if, if I got to get, I want to get somebody's ass for taking me out. If you wait for a punchline, it ain't one. It ain't coming. It ain't coming. Right. Dude, that, that, that had me... Like amped up, I was like, I was about to stand up and fucking throw punches. You know, I was like, yeah, go EY, and then uh, I'm gonna go with James on this one. What the? <laughs> I, was, I was mad. I was mad at Finn. I was like, really. Really, right, right. Well, to respect James Storm, it, 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 to me, it, it would have made perfect sense to put Eric in. But he, he, Sting did go on to say, "He's like, you're my wild card." Well, so, let the wild card have a tune-up match before you get into the before you get in the lead the lockdown. He has not had a match since he came back. Is that right? But do maybe, maybe do I will get the win for Team TNA? Maybe that's what this is setting up for. What, what did Sting say? He kissed a 25 foot shark or something like that? Sport fish. What was it a shark? Man. From his other show that he does. But, anyways, in, into the match, you know, we all know Great Storm, uh, how Great Storm is in that ring. You know, we know what, what he does. And another guy that I like, Anderson. He's another underrated wrestler. He's very underrated. In the, in, I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm an Anderson fan. I'm an asshole. I am too. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So. I mean, so am I, to a degree, so am I. Um, I mean, Anderson, Red Anderson is one of my one of my guys. Like he's one of the guys that keeps me watching because when he actually gets on the mic and does his promos. I'm like, I, I like everything about it except for when he talks about Green Bay, just because I'm a Bears fan. But, <laughs> but dude, dude, he, he to me got a raw deal in the other org. And he, because of, of Randy. Somebody, wah, wah, he hurt me, wah. Yeah. Oh, my like, shoulder, ow. I mean, then he then he went ahead. He had a kid, and he came back. He was fat, but he's back in shape now. The thing that I noticed that during the match tonight, though, how much tanner did fucking James Storm have on him? Because it wiped off on on his white T-shirt like craziness. Like Jesus Christ! Has, has any of us ever really known James Storm to tan? Like I didn't. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. I never knew him. No, well. he, I don't ever think he's really been known to tan. First, first of all, and 
It, it's it's like, dude, did you it's like did you overdose on spray paint or some shit? He definitely so, did. I have a question. What did you guys think of um the other thing with AJ Styles where the camera crew tried to catch up with him and it was clear that he was talking to a motorcycle, yeah, a guy in a motorcycle jacket? I thought he was talking to Mr. Anderson at first. I'm like, wait, who the f*** is that? Well, I've been told you see Mr. Anderson a few times tonight, huh? <laughs> right? No, well, I mean, just I'm wondering, it's like, wait a minute, is that somebody from yeah. 18 and 8? I mean, first, AJ was like, AJ, he flipped on me. He's like, basically, like, why the fuck are you following me? Take your ass on. I'm really happy. I'm really happy that he said that he's going to be in Chicago. I'm going to be there. Um, I don't know what the card's going to be as far as the whole the whole thing. I mean, this is going to be the show after lockdown. You know, it, it could be. I mean, they have really flubbed. A lot of their shows, a lot of their impact shows, after pay per view. Um, I think that this year, because they are down to four and went or and are going live on impact, that this actually will be a quality show, and I'm 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 happy to be able to be able to go into it. Uh, I, I am really, I'm really excited to, to be there. Like I said the, in the pre-show, um, I've been waiting for this for since they did Bomb for Glory at the same, uh, the same venue, which I didn't get to go to. Uh, I really think that being there is going to enhance my love for a the business. B, TNA Impact Wrestling, and just, you know, it's going to be an insane show. And it has to be. It has to be an insane show because it's their first live, not Impact Zone show. I'm looking forward to how it's going to be outside of the Impact Zone. This is big for me. (laughs) I mean, this is something to me that they need to prove themselves. They need to put a great show on, not necessarily for the fans that are in attendance, but for the fans that are watching on TV because they've hyped it up and it is their first live event, not at the impact zone as far as their weekly weekly episodic show. And I... I really think that I, I really think that this this is their their chance to step up. Right. right. Yeah. What happened tonight that made me look forward to them getting out of the impact zone was when uh was when uh, they just said they were going to decide if Lady Top Up was going to get her contract or not. So, you heard right? all the people in the impact zone chanting no, and I said, see, this is what a part of CNA's problem has always been is that when you have those same marks in the impact zone every week yeah. and it's the same group of people, you don't get a true measurement of your fan base. Those people right. can't, like, you know, have you guys not watched a wrestling show before? How could, you, how could you say no to her? Like, no, the works just getting booed. Dude, he was, he was smoking something. That's why he was getting booed. Who was getting booed? Bruce Pritchard. Uh, Bruce Pritchard, he was getting booed. I'm like, how are you going to say, how, how you say no to her? That crowd, that crowd takes away from their show. So I'm happy right. to go on the road. And that's I'm fine. just saying, like, I'm not even necessarily saying her. Like, I understand her background, and I'm not even saying she doesn't deserve it, but how are you going to sit there? You you won't even, yeah. so we're basically going to give it to someone who had a great performance, but not the person that won? How does that work? But that's the person that won, but you got to remember, it wasn't, it's not like we were watching a real athletic competition. There was really two games put on the best Wait, or, or, or somebody no. said that uh, she's already in OVW, though, is that right? right. She's already in OVW, meaning she's basically already under contract. Right. Anyway. If, it if, was it wasn't for, if it wasn't for that, that's the only reason why I'm, I'm not entirely going to rip TNA a new 
It's all for it. But, right. But at the same time, I thought that they could have taken both, and nobody would have been mad at a replay. Right. So true. Let's get some fresh faces in the knockout division. They they said Taylor Hendricks won a few months back, and I still have yet to see her. I'm like, let's get some different. She's still down in OVW? Right, yeah. And we got all these girls that look different from the ones that you already have. Let's get those fresh faces up in there. So, this is a chance for them to, you know, let's make some changes on that road. Because, I mean, how many knockouts, how many, as far as, TNA's roster, how many knockouts are there really? And I'm talking about just actively competing every time. I'm not even sure. Because there's, there's few. Even even if you include Madison Rain, who has not been seen for months, even if you include her, that's only her, Velvet, OD, well, I guess ODB, but she hadn't really been wrestling either. Her, ODB, Velvet, Tess, Tara, Gail, that's and Mickey, and that's about it. Well, Mickey that's James hasn't even been there in a while. Exactly. Well, if you can say, let's, let's get some more of these girls. Let's, you know, let's get a first of the girls. You have more girls on the rock. The knockout division is one of the things that helped set TNA apart. And I think I remember that they used to get their eyes, they used to be their eyes red excitement. So I said, keep on going with that. Right. But they had a much better roster of knockouts than who. Yeah. All right. All right. Now we got uh, Anderson. Okay, we got Anderson winning the match over James Storm due to the little uh, little interference, you know, presence of uh, aces and eights coming out. Right. And the TNA locker room comes out and, you know, try to, you know, have Storm's back, but, you know, Storm took his attention off and, Call a mic check. All right, next up we have Bully Ray and Brooke Hogan coming out. Bully Ray gets in the ring, talking about you know the match and stuff on on Sunday and all right. Then we get Jeff Hardy comes out. You know they're telling each other, you know, basically having a bromance moment. Right, right. Talk about how much they respect each other and all that. Yeah, I respect you for what you, Blue Ray, tell them. I respect you for, you know, you overcome your demons and, you know, overcome, you know, stuff. And now you're the TNA champion and I'm proud of you, blah, blah, blah. And vice versa, he tells Bully Ray, I'm proud of you. And, but Bully Ray says, well, I'm proud of my accomplishments, but I can never really say I'm proud of myself because he has yet to become the TNA world champion. Right. So, in the middle of the bromance, here comes Aces and Eights, which we already knew this was going to happen. Well, no, mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan comes out. Yeah, Hulk Hogan, you can't go to a TNA show without Hulk Hogan showing I up. Forgot, I almost forgot. No, that's Hogan. like that's like having a WWE show without John Cena. Right. And Hulk Hogan comes out basically saying, you know, these are the two, two top guys in the company right now. You know what I'm saying? No one... No one else deserves to be in this spot more than these more than these two right now because they're the two top guys in the company. Which at one time I would have said they were true because Bully Ray was the top heel in the company. Not anymore. Um, yeah. And anyways, so we get you know, Aces and Ace comes out, jumps in the ring, starts beating them up. Here comes the team in their locker room and try to even up the odds. So what were y'all thoughts on that segment? I thought that was a cool way to end the show and to sell the pay-per-view, actually. I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you there? I'm there. Oh, what's your thoughts about Tim? Um, anything with Hogan, saying as that was my childhood hero, as fake as he was, um, I did like it. Um, I spoke earlier saying I would like to see Bully get a single title. Um, Hardy obviously has a has the belt for political reasons, for money reasons, for the fact that he is the highest 
selling merch guy in the company. But I I I, I want to see that strap on on someone else, and mm. if it's bully. Like I said, only if he's a heel. I don't like this face face. I don't like I don't like things two faces going for it. Um, I and I'd like I'd rather see like a Matt Morgan as a heel get it versus a Bully Ray as a face get right. it. Now if if Bully does get it and he he does win. I expect a heel turn, and I expect him to reveal something stupid, like mm. he's involved with aces and eights, as much as he's been beat up by them. Right. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. That's the deal. Same thing with Anderson joining them. Same thing with um, yeah, um, Aries and Rue trying to enlist their services, mm. even though both, especially Aries. Okay, but... So, See, the, thing, the thing about that is, oh, Hogan says, no matter which one of these men win, whoever's the champion will be leading us into a new era. Yeah, who do you think? Who do y'all think would better fit leading us into the new era, Bully <laughs> Ray or Jeff Hardy? Bully. Uh, bully. I bully. Think, I think PNA would benefit from having Bully Ray a champion right now. Even though, in my opinion, the person who should be at the top of the TNA mountain should be Bobby Ray. I really did. Like, if there's if anybody should be at the top of the TNA mountain, period, as their top champion, as their top guy, it should be him. I don't know if there's anybody better. But as far as who should win this match, it should be Bully Ray. He too. Yeah, I and I and, and I, w- I would like to see you know either Bully or you said Bobby Roode. Yeah, he was already there. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing James Storm actually hold it for an extended period. Right. Yeah. James I think James, I think James Storm has so many needs to do to be a fellow holder. Well, James Storm and Bobby Roode's original feud should have gone way longer than it did. In my opinion. And, and yeah. it sh- the ball on it. They, they probably burned Do you guys think it should have also been over the wall title, or that should have still been over the wall title? It should have been them too? It should have been been going. Going. Here's the thing. Back when Bobby Roode first won the title, they flew like the best. That storyline should have gone on for about six months. It should have been Omega Powers type split up. You know, you have two guys that are together, but they're together just to split up. And it should have been slowly but surely, while either James Storm or Wall or Root had the title. Whoever had the title, that the other guy was slowly but surely getting jealous of that. Mm. So they could have gone from there, but I just think they kind of screwed the pooch and went too quickly and hot mm. shot. All right, know. Red. All right, yeah, I think we're running short on time. Wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. From, all right, all right. So promote it down. So, so basically, you know, Sunday is going to be the big lockdown. Their road to lockdown. Their lockdown is like the other companies WrestleMania, basically. Um, got some good matches going on. Hopefully, Sunday we'll probably be be here doing it again. Which, yeah, I, I don't know if I'll make the show because I'm not going to be able to watch the the uh, the pay per view. I'll be watching. I got That's it. Right. Oh, and here's something else to think about Lethal Lockdown. Will this finally be the year that the heel team wins Lethal Lockdown? Because if you notice during all of TNA's history, not once have the heel team won Lethal Lockdown. Not once. I did not, but thank you. Uh, this could be the year that that happens. This could be the year that the heel team finally wins Lethal Lockdown. Well, we'll be finding out next week. What I like about Lethal Lockdown is that it's a... Uh, it, it reminds me of how when WCW and NWA used to do war games, it's set up the same exact way. So this has been great. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I'd like to thank Anthony and Brandon, you know, for coming on the show, you know, giving us your thoughts. Oh, um, so. Hey, we'll be yep. back here next Thursday after Impact. 